In this video, I want to provide a stronger version of the Cayley's theorem we proved in abstract algebra one. And so without a better name, we're going to call it the strong Cayley's theorem. Remember previously that Cayley's theorem says that every group is isomorphic to a subgroup of SN. So essentially, we can think of every group as a permutation group. Um, the proof utilize the fact that we can identify group elements with permutations by associating to that group element its left multiplication. That is to say, we identify G with the function lambda G, which goes from G to G, which is the function lambda G of X is just left multiplication GX, like so. So we can identify group elements with permutations. Um, I want to now point out that this identification, a, a group element with its left multiplication, this is just the left regular action of the group onto itself. And so what we're doing here is we're associating a group with its left regular action, which then per is a permutation action, which then connects you to a permutation group. It turns out that in general, we can associate an, a group with basically any of its group actions and get a stronger condition there. All right, so let's stay. Let's state specifically what the strong Cayley's theorem st states. Uh, G is a group acting upon some G set, call it X. Um, associated to X, we can take S sub X, which is then the symmetric group on the set X. So S, S sub X is just the collection of all permutations on the set X, and that does form, in fact, a group. Okay, um, so for any element G, inside of the group G, we can come up with a map. We're going to call it pi sub G. This will be a permutation from X to X where we associate, uh, well, the functions defined by the rule pi sub G of X is then just D G dot X. It's the group action. So our first claim is that this map pi sub G is in fact a permutation. So it belongs to S sub X. And then furthermore, uh, the map phi from G to S sub X, which SX is a group, of course, we identify X or we identify uh, an element group, the element of the group G with its permutation pi sub G. This is in fact actually a group homomorphism. So with respect to any group action, we have a homomorphism from a group to a symmetric group. Now, of course, in the case of Cayley's theorem, we have the regular action. And this homomorphism will be one-to-one, -one, therefore we're isomorphic to a permutation group. But we don't necessarily get isomorphisms in general. This could be a homomorphism. And this could be the fact that two different group elements have the same, they act the same way. And this is the very, very beginning of what's called representation theory. We can represent any group as a permutation action. That's what we're doing here with the strong Cayley's theorem. So the first, the first thing we have to prove is we have to prove that pi sub g is a bijection. We, by construction, it's a map from x to x. Uh, why is it bijective? Well, to show that it's bijective, we could show individually that's one to one and onto. But an alternative approach will just be to produce its function inverse. That is, there is a function with composed with pi g uh, to give you back the identity. And because we're identifying already uh, this function with a group element, there's a candidate on who the inverse should be. The inverse of pi g as a function could be the function associated to the element g inverse. So that's going to be our claim. I want to show you that pi g composed with pi g inverse is the identity function, and therefore pi g and then this pi g inverse, uh, well, I should say this pi g gives you the identity, so it's in fact the inverse, proving the claim here. So that's how we're going to get that it's a bijection. And so let's go through this calculation. Um, the way that I want to show that pi g composed with pi g inverse is the identity is just look at it element-wise. If x is an arbitrary element of the domain, if we can prove that we get back x, then this would prove that the composition of the two functions is the identity. So let's start off with exactly that, pi g composed with pi g inverse of x. What does it do? Well, by definition here, pi g inverse of x is g inverse acting upon x, and then pi g by definition is g acting on whatever that turns out to be. But as we have a group action here, compatibility comes into play, and we can reassociate this to become g g inverse dot x, 
which g, g inverse will be the identity. What does the identity do to x? Well, it does nothing. You get back x. But this is exactly what the identity function should do to x. And as x was chosen arbitrarily, we then see that uh, g composed with g, excuse me, pi g composed with pi g inverse is the identity. And by similar reasoning, we get that uh, pi g inverse composed with pi g gives you the identity. So this shows that pi g is in fact a permutation because it's bijective. So pi g does belong to the group Sx. So we can identify g with its permutation in Sx. That's what phi did, right? So phi sends g into Sx in such a way that g is identified, and little g is identified with pi g. So we have a function from a group into another group. Is this a homomorphism? We now have to prove the homomorphic property here that multiplication is preserved. If we take two different elements of, well, I mean, they could be the same element. I don't know. It doesn't matter. We just take two elements of the group g, call it g and h. We want to then prove that the function pi sub gh is identical to the function, the composition of functions, pi g and pi h. We're gonna do this element-wise. If we, again, if we take an arbitrary element of the domains and show that these two functions always agree with each other, then the two functions are in fact the same. I'm gonna start with uh, the permutation associated to g h. So by definition, this is g h dot x. By compatibility, this becomes g dot h dot x. For which then, what does what does h do to x? Well, it does the same thing that pi h does to x. What does g do to this? Well, g dot whatever, that's just pi g there. And so we get pi g of pi h of x, and this is just function composition here. This is pi g of pi h of x. So this then shows us that pi g h is the same thing as pi g composed with pi h. So therefore, since pi gh is the same thing as pi g composed with pi h, that gives us the homomorphic property because pi of gh is the image of gh, and then pi, uh, pi g composed with pi h, that is permutation multiplication. This is pi g times pi h, and so that's then the product of the images of g and h like so. This then proves uh, this strong Cayley's theorem that every group action produces a homomorphism from a group into a symmetric group.